I'm Robert Therrell. I'm Chase Bridges. And we both want to be screenwriters. So listen along as we find out how. Each week we'll outline a new short film. And maybe even write some of our favorites. This is Written By. To written by the number one podcast in the world, right behind all the other ones, right behind all the other ones. <laughs> hey, we're not back yet. No, we are still on hiatus. But, but we back though. Yeah, you know, we told y'all. I don't know if you believed us, but we're we're keeping y'all fed throughout this hiatus. Yeah, we're not so leaving you high and dry this time around. Grab a fork and a spoon. Yeah, or a spork. <laughs> grab a spork if you want to save some time and resources. Yeah, so <laughs> first of all, yeah. our Cop Rock series, the first yes. episode dropped this yes, past it did. Friday. Yes, when is this podcast dropping? Oh, uh, Monday. Monday, yeah. <laughs> it dropped last Friday, so go check that out. Uh, it's the first, so it's we watched the pilot episode. You know, it's cut down a bit to where it's only the interesting parts. You don't have to watch a full hour of TV. Um yeah, but you but get there, to watch us watch a full hour there, of TV. <laughs> there are some insane moments in this pilot i think one of the craziest moments i keep on thinking about that stays in my memory from cop rock is in that pilot is it the robot yes okay (laughs) we're not gonna say anything more you gotta go watch it go watch (laughs) another robot (laughs) youtube channel we're also we're trying out the video on this one hey see this video yeah you're gonna be able to watch it on anchor or or spotify yeah or youtube watch me struggle with my mic stand (laughs) and and yeah and we're going to have the clips on the IG, baby. Because, you know, this year we're doing it right. This isn't yeah. season three. This is season 2.5. How does... What What do you mean by that? This isn't season three yet. We haven't started season oh, three yet. Oh, what we're doing currently. Yeah, okay, yeah. Wait till you next see season. what we got okay. planned for season three. This yeah. is season 2.5. Yeah. But in the meantime, so we got we got the Cop Rock series going. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to put an episode a month on this main feed just to keep it active. Yeah, so that way y'all, you know, you don't... You don't uh, get your withdrawals of us. Exactly. We know you're all addicted to us. Just, so. Man, I'm I'm fiending for some Robert and Chase. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're doing today is a few episodes back yep. when yep. we had a scheduling conflict and we had yep. to put together a last minute episode, we just kind of talked about movies yeah. and a bunch of people were like, wow, we really like that. I mean, so. they said that to you. They didn't say it to me. Oh, they didn't say that to you? I only get death threats. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about our top 10 movies of 2022. Yeah. Since we, the year's over. Yeah, y'all gave us an excuse to talk about movies. I was like, say less. I'll talk as much as you want. <laughs> about movies, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And dude, 2022 was a crazy year for movies dude it really was i was thinking about that when i was going over the list i was mm. sad that i only had 10 picks i Same. almost got yeah. rid of my like there was one movie i wanted to put my top 10 i knew it was gonna make people really angry and i was <laughs> it like didn't I, make it. and it didn't make it but i wanted to find a way but i couldn't justify getting rid of any of my other ones yeah dude i was looking at a i'm gonna spoil my list a little but like any any other year a movie like turning red top gun maverick oh yeah Bodies, 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 the Northmen. Those Elvis. would all be top ten movies of any other year for me. But oh yeah. Oh, you're saying those didn't make it. Those didn't make it, but like it, Yeah. Northman didn't make my list either. Yeah. We can talk about the ones that didn't make it at the end. Yeah, let's do because that. Because yeah. I do think that there's a lot of interesting movies that just didn't make the cut. Like the yeah. one I'm talking about, I'll bring it up later. So listen to the end. Yeah. So I, I, I think I have a theory as to why the twenty twenty two movies were so good. Is it because they all of the 2020 exactly yeah a lot of movies that were in production in 2019 got delayed so people spent more time on them also we're getting the first movies that were written during 2020 like knives out yeah or glass onion i should say Uh uh-huh yeah so a, a lot of the movies that were like about one of the most chaotic times in recent history are like starting to come out nope is another one of those and man yeah yeah, dude the, the amount of movies that just came out i mean i I went to the movies. There was a period of time where I was at the movies every single week. Yeah. yeah. We were going. Uh-huh. Uh, everyone we know was going. Like, and I still didn't see all the movies. I didn't see Top Gun Maverick. Really? Yeah, I still That's haven't crazy. seen Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see... I'm halfway through um, 
the Banshees of Isherson. Isherson? In a shire, I think. Something uh, like that. I didn't get to finish it yet, but what I saw, I was loving. Yeah. Dude, let's uh, let's give that disclaimer real quick, because out of my list, I still haven't seen The Fablemans. I haven't either. So I haven't seen The Whale. I haven't seen that Triangle yet. of Sadness, The Menu. No, uh, I'm probably not going to see Pearl, I haven't seen. I haven't seen Pearl or X. Okay. And I needed to see both, because I love horror. Man, X is really good. Did not make the top 10 any other year it would have. So it would have yeah. been number one in yeah. a lot of years. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that's the thing. That's the whole point is like so many movies came out yeah. this year that it was hard to see all of them without going bankrupt. Exactly. Yeah. You know, came I'm, close. I'm getting married, but dog, yeah. I need money. <laughs> hey, pay me money. <laughs> yeah. Chase just got engaged. I so. need money, dog. Yeah. I did it without a plan. <laughs> Off the handle. <laughs> All right, let's get this started. What's your what's your number ten, Jason? All right, hold on. Let me get my phone out. Why do uh, I have to go first? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we haven't done a podcast in a long time. I feel out of practice. Yeah, and I'm being watched. Oh. Okay, dude. My I always think about that. It's like now I got to look good for these, dude. <laughs> I, when we were shooting church stories video, it used to suck. Yeah, because I like just showing up, being comfortable. Yeah, but dude, I, I got like, caught out in the rain and I was like drenched, and I was like, "Man, am I about to change my whole outfit just for this podcast?" <laughs> yes. Did you? Yeah, I was soaked, man. Why were you soaked? How long were you? Outside? I was like carrying some gear. Oh, oh dang, man. man, dang, man. My number ten. I'm curious if this is also your number ten. Okay. Actually, I, I've seen your letterbox list, so oh, <laughs> I, I don't remember your number yeah. ten though. Bodies, bodies, bodies is my number ten. Oh man, mine didn't make the list. Oh. Would have any other year, but dude, bodies, dude. my bodies, man is. I loved that movie. We yeah. went and saw that together. It was it was one of the best theatrical the, yeah. experiences. The dude <laughs> beside us was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was one of those movies where there was the perfect amount of audience interaction. Yeah, yeah. It didn't. It only enhanced the experience. It didn't get in the way it, of it. Exactly. Yeah. It wasn't obnoxious. It was just funny. Yeah. I mean, there was one point where just like a group of teenage girls screamed and ran down the aisle <laughs> to the front row, and like I was so scared. <laughs> <laughs> but it added to it because it was a fun yeah. movie. Yeah. So, bodies, bodies, bodies. My number ten. Yeah, why? What? What do you like so much about it? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, first of all, it's it's an idea for a movie I've had for a long time. Uh, Have you ever played one of those games of like, uh, like Secret Mafia. Hitler or Mafia yeah. or something like that? There's one called Bodies in the Dark. Okay. And I played it while I was in college. It was just like this group of like people I didn't usually hang out. Like it was a mix yeah. of my friends and then some other people and like. We're in this giant empty music building and it's dark and people are hiding like it's hide and seek. And I just remember being like, this is the perfect time to kill kill somebody. (laughs) (laughs) And so I was always had that in my mind. And then those games like Secret Hitler and Mafia and stuff is like, oh, those are such an interesting psychological thing. And so Bodies, Bodies, Bodies is essentially a movie talking about. What would it be like if a secret Hitler or they call it Bodies, Bodies, Bodies in the movie? Happened in real life. Someone's dead yeah. and you can't trust. And I just, I love whodunits. And it, it was a, I saw a tweet the other day that said that it captured Gen Z perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the few movies to try and not be cringe. Cringy. So, yeah. yeah. I just, I think, I think it was just wonderful. Totally. Yeah. Dude, it was so funny. Uh, the mystery aspect of it was so cool. Oh, How yeah. it ended up was so. so yeah. Clever. We won't spoil it yeah. so you guys can see it. Yeah. But the, I mean, that's what I think made it on my top 10 list over yeah. some other movies is because I just love mystery yeah. so much. Dude, one underrated aspect of Bodies, Bodies, Bodies is a lot of movies struggle with showing cell phones on screen. Oh, yeah. They did it well. They did it. They made the cell phones look beautiful because like yeah. Bo Burnham's talked about this before because he like experimented with that in eighth grade. But like there's a way to like make a cell phone like enhance a the scene. screen like all every single character has this like little light on them and so you just have these little circles of light in every scene and it's wow it's i haven't cool. seen eighth grade oh it's good i movie. need to yeah. i love bo burnham uh dude also like like when i see like a play or something and someone pulls out a cell phone i'm like ugh. yeah <laughs> but i think we talked about it right after we watched it too buys by his bodies it was like oh it was like it was good like yeah. how they used it yeah What's your number 10? All right, my number 10, <laughs> it is Elvis. Okay, I understand that. I thought about lowering mine. Yeah. My ranking yeah. of Elvis. Uh, and it, it's it's not 
it's not because I didn't like Elvis. It's because everything else was so good. But so man, good. Elvis is just just crazy. And the thing is, I don't like artist biopics that really? much. And I whenever like the previews for this were coming out and we were seeing like Tom Hanks in costume, mm, I was like, oh, brother, yes. another one of these. But it <laughs> it manages to just be awesome. It's not necessarily showing real life. It's like real life on cocaine. And yeah, dude. I, just the visuals are so crazy. And some of those sequences are so yeah. relentlessly. Yeah. The last 30 minutes hurts it, I think. It's sad. Yeah. yeah it yeah. hurts the movie. And it movie. slows down a lot. But. but dude, that first hour yeah. when young Austin Butler is driving around in that car yeah. and whipping around and just being cool. Yeah. <sighs> And again, the the closest thing to compare it to is it really does feel like it's edited the same way Speed Racer is. Oh, yeah. Where it's like there aren't all the scenes just kind of blend into each other. Like there aren't traditional cuts. A lot of it is cut like a music video, which adds to the intensity. Like it it makes you feel current day how the people in that time would have felt watching Elvis. Oh yeah, yeah. And as bad as Lerman directed, right? He did you ever see his Romeo Juliet? I did. Yeah, that's yeah. very similar. Yeah. I love that too. Yeah, man, that movie. And they they make a world where like goofy Tom Hanks like works. Like, oh it yeah, fits perfectly. People yeah. were going in on that. I uh-huh. think it was. I forgot it was Tom Hanks. Fifteen minutes into the movie. Yeah. No. Man. Same. Yeah. <laughs> Wrap me up and call me Priscilla. I uh-huh. love that movie. <laughs> Yeah, man, Elvis, one of one of the most stunning like lead performances too. Oh yeah, you think it's gonna win the Oscar? Uh, there's stiff competition. It could get man. The Oscar voters love like musicians though, or like yeah, biopics. Biopic, so yeah, yeah, it it's like it. it's like the rule when they remake. Uh, what's that movie Bradley Cooper does with Lady Gaga? Oh, uh, A Star Is Born. Every time they remade that movie, it's won Oscar. Yeah, it's won the Oscar. Yep. When yeah. Judy Garland did it, it won the Oscar. Uh-huh. When Barbara Streisand did it, it won the Oscar. When Lady yeah. Gaga did it, it won the Oscar. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I have my personal picks for who I want to win, but I'll save that for later up the list. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't know who I want to win the Oscars, but Austin Butler is not a bad choice. Yeah. It's not a bad choice. No, it has <laughs> everything to do with us. Man, I just love that movie. All right. My number nine. And I was really surprised it wasn't higher on the list, but again, this year was crazy. The Batman. The Batman. Number nine. Nice. Uh, it's it, it's a movie. First of all, I love Batman. Mm-hmm. I think Robert Pattinson's the best Batman. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big. I think it's very true to the comics. But uh, all that aside, just true from the movie, it's like a seven or a Zodiac mm-hmm. or uh, any of those um, thrillers. I think it's fun. the The mystery itself was kind of lacking, but it's like it's a Batman mystery, yeah, so it's more about yeah. the action almost. Yeah, yeah. The shot of him upside down yeah. on fire is one of the most beautiful things I saw this year. Uh, I love Robert Pattinson. I love uh, Colin Farrell's Penguin, dude. <laughs> Come on, why are you showing me that? Come on. Uh, when Robert Pattinson <laughs> makes a joke as Batman, he goes thumb drive. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I'm I'm a, I'm a huge Robert Pattinson fan, so I just really loved it. Um, yeah, dude, I like the Batman. Uh, any other year probably would have been in my top ten. It wasn't in it, was it? No, it didn't man. make it. Man, but man, it's a good movie. I like. They make Batman, I think more than any other ones, like really feel human. Like, yeah. you know, like the car chases are messy. His bat wing or whatever is messing up and he's falling over and yeah oh yeah Yeah. it's felt very visceral i'm not like i'm not the kind of guy that's like i want a grounded batman like give me uh you know a mr freeze and a superman you know give me goofy stuff but i think the way that they handled it was like matt reeves is creating a batman a a gotham city where Mm -hmm. it's completely grounded in reality but it wouldn't feel out of place yeah. If something supernatural happened totally, or if yeah. Robin was there, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. I hope Robin's in the next one. Uh-huh. I love actually, yeah. I hope they cast me as Robin in the next one. How about that? Yeah. I, uh, I saw someone point out something interesting. I want to hear your thoughts on it, but someone said that, uh, 
the Batman is crazy because every single main cast member gave one of their best performances in another movie this year. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. It's definitely true for Colin Farrell. Yeah. Probably Robert Pattinson. Yeah. Paul Dano was in Fablemans. Oh, I haven't seen Fablemans. I want to see Fablemans. Yeah. Paul of course, Dana Colin did. Farrell and Banshees. And, yeah, dude. Yeah. Colin Farrell is just on his, on his A game right now. What, what else was Robert Pattinson in this year? Uh, yeah, I forget. I know there was something. I don't know. I don't know. Forget about Forget it. Forget about it. Come on. Come on. <laughs> okay, what was your number nine, Rob? My number nine was Prey. Okay, yeah. Mine's higher. Okay. But Prey's on my list. Yeah. Man, loved Prey. Uh, I, I love the simplicity of Prey. Dude. It's just a simple, like, you know, fight or flight type monster movie. But Short. Yeah. I loved it. But it's also, it's done so clever. Like, just the simple concept of putting the sci-fi monster in the past is just so ingenious. Yeah. You care about the main character so much. The fights are cool. The visuals look cool, like how they shoot the countryside or wherever they are, yeah. the woods. Uh, there's a really cool dog. And that gives a bonus point. Yeah. yeah the dude, main character has that dog in her. So yeah, she there, got there that are dog two dogs. <laughs> she got that dog in her. Yeah, dude. I, yeah. Just the, like... Everyone watched that movie because the premise was just genius, yeah. and it just delivered, yeah, it delivered hard on, on that yeah. premise. Native Americans yeah. versus the Predator. That's Wookie, Man. actually. What, how's it? <laughs> I forget. I forget. <laughs> yeah, dude, that, that movie was so great that I, I'm i pretty sure the next like three or four Predator movies we see are going to yeah. be... Predator versus a totally, different time which period. Which I'm, I'm on board for. Heck yeah, I can't man. wait. Heck yeah, dude. All right. My number eight. The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Okay. I actually haven't seen this one yet, so. Dude, you got to watch this movie. Okay. Okay. I saw it in theaters. It'd still probably be good on the, on the at home. Yeah. Dude, that movie's so funny. So you got <laughs> Nicolas Cage. Playing Nicolas Cage. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like, <laughs> no, uh, Nicolas Cage, man, is so funny. You have um, Pedro uh, Pedro Pascal, dude, fantastic performance. Yeah. Like, it's such a silly, goofy movie, and you just don't. We don't get a lot of those anymore. Uh -huh. Like these huge yeah. theatrical releases that I, yeah. are just fun movies. It's a blockbuster. It's making fun of blockbusters, not in the way. So you mentioned this year that like you didn't want any movies that were like you didn't like the movies that were like picking fun of itself. Like you wanted something so sincere. Yeah. This movie, although it is a parody, I uh -huh. guess it is so played so straightforward. Yeah. You're yeah. like, oh no, this is just Nick. This has happened to Nicolas Cage before. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dude, I, yeah, yeah, I can't wait to watch it. That, that movie, fun. that movie's fun, man. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of miss when there were more like big budget comedies, right? Or like, I mean, you know, it's mixed with other stuff. Like, it's also an action movie, but it's like, you know, yeah, but it's, it's meant it's, to make you laugh first yeah, and foremost. One hundred percent. And the director, who's the directors? I think there's two directors. No, it's one director, Tom Gormican. The only other thing he's made is a movie called That Awkward Moment from 2014 with Michael B. Jordan and Zac Efron. Huh. I'd never heard of okay. it, but, dude, he killed it. Yeah. That's all I got to say about that. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> yeah, man. What's your number eight? My number eight is Glass Onion. So low. What is that movie? So low, Robert. I know. Man, man. I, I was almost tempted to put it higher. It's just there, I don't know. There are other movies that, like, I think like did more interesting things but like what i love about glass onion is just how it was like a straightforward comedy like we were just talking about yeah. like more than anything it was trying to make you laugh which was like even a deviation from like the first knives out like it really yeah. like created its own new tone even though it's a sequel technically and yeah the mystery is cool and i uh i wrote about this before ella I'll put a link to the article yeah. I wrote. I, I wrote like a like a kind of like a retrospective of like all the movies I watched this year. And yeah. in that I was talking about Dives Out and I was like, or Glass Onion. And mm -hmm. the uh the tech billionaire character in this just, just describes perfectly <laughs> every single interaction I have ever hundred percent of the time had with 
a wealthy person and yeah Edward and not Norton only like man. how they act but also like how their wealth attracts people that worship them or are trying to leech off them yeah gassing them up like because they legit believe in this person or like they have ulterior motives ryan johnson nailed it yeah he just yeah. nailed it and it's, it's such an intricately written thing to like the set off set up and payoffs or you know so i tight. personally i hated it because the first half would deceived me <laughs> right, right you know how mysteries do yeah man dude every time ben shapiro opens his mouth about any sort of art <laughs> it's, just so it's like hey man i can uh I can handle all the the racism and homophobia, yeah. but I draw the line when it comes to knives. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> you don't talk bad about knives. <laughs> oh man, dude. Man, yeah. You know what? What's sucks. funny is I actually I know one of his video editors. <laughs> I think I do too. Do we know the same? I think guy? it's the same person. Okay, okay. we'll talk later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I think it's the same person. Um, yeah. But no, Glass Onion. Great. Dude. I cannot wait for the next one. Uh, Dude, I could talk about I also, that I, I love how... Well, you're probably going to be talking about oh, it a I little will. bit. But <laughs> oh, I will. I love how Daniel Craig like was attached to Bond, and you could tell he hated it so much. And now he looks like like a little puppy that's found its forever home. And it's <laughs> oh, so yeah. Fun. And uh, I, I saw an interview they did the other day where Ryan Johnson was like, yeah, I'm writing the third one. And, and Daniel Craig goes, we're doing a third one? <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, you've been new. <laughs> Um, yeah, dude, I can talk about that movie forever. I think that movie's awesome. Um, my turn. Number seven, Elvis. Elvis. Everything we said when you brought up Elvis, it yeah. ranked a little higher on my list than on your list, but honestly, I thought about dropping it some. Uh -huh. At one moment, I thought about getting rid of it altogether because I was like, it's really long. Yeah. The last 30 minutes kind of kills the kills everything that it created in the yeah. beginning i feel like it's meant to do that though. i know like that's part of what's so devastating i know about what happened i is but the reason it stayed and the reason i have it higher up is because the feeling i had watching austin butler whip onto that street with doja cat blasting yeah, man <laughs> it's just like it, it movies are all about making you feel something and that i just thought like this guy's the coolest guy in the world i don't know yeah. anything about elvis but after watching that movie, I was like, Aust yeah. if, if Elvis was half as cool as Austin Butler as Elvis was, mm -hmm. I get why the whole world yeah. went crazy for Elvis. Yeah. Dude, I've uh, I've heard someone say once that like people talk about trying to make something original. And yeah. At this point, like almost every idea has like been done. And so like really the true bark of originality is to like create a universe to where something is happening in your film that could only happen in your film oh, wow. and like transitioning from big film score and like people performing in the 50s of like toxic by britney spears is something that could only happen in, in this elvis movie exactly dude uh when, when it comes to like making a big thing in the news lately or at least a big thing for me mm -hmm. uh is talking about how sherlock holmes all of sherlock's homework all of sherlock holmes works are in the public domain now yeah. so they're completely free like no more will the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle estate sue you if you try to yeah. make one. And uh, I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about the public domain, which, strangely, I think about a lot. Yeah. And I just think it's so fascinating how it's like Disney was built off of the public domain. Yeah. So it's like whenever people are like, there's no more original ideas, there's no way to do anything original, you don't necessarily have to do something original, just do something in an original way. Yeah. like. The story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves was like a fairy tale that was told yeah, for yeah. years and years and years. And then Disney made an animated version mm -hmm. in his style. And so I think there's yeah. a place for that yeah. everywhere. And back to the Elvis, like you could imagine the boring version of an Elvis movie oh, like yeah. a million times over. Oh, yeah. I bet someone has made an Elvis biopic yeah. before. Yeah. Yeah. This was just oh. so unique. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it was awesome. It was it's perfect. After I saw it, I texted you and I was like, you have to see it. Yeah. Because you probably weren't going to go see it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Number seven, Barbarian. I did not see you it. did not see Barbarian. And what? I've heard like everyone be like, don't look up anything about this movie. Nope. Just watch it. Don't. Yep. Yep. It is, it is one of the craziest horror movies. Dude, talking about originality, like this takes so many big swings and 
like the story of how it all came together is crazy because like trying to do this like any traditional way like mm. nine out of ten times like it would be dead on arrival like what happens in this script and how ambitious it is how the movie like transforms throughout the watch time into completely different things and there are so many so many different ideas and themes that are all like working together on this it's like legitimately scary it's also like kind of campy at the mm. same time has great performances by everyone and yeah since i won't spoil it if you have seen the movie the director he did a really good podcast this okay. is this is the extra credits podcast the director zach Krager guested on it and he I've never heard a filmmaker be like this open about like what the movie is about or anything. Cause like these podcast hosts are such big fans of it that he yeah. just basically told them almost everything. And like, there, there are all these themes that have to do with so many things. And he like explores his intentions behind them. But wow. then also at the very end, he's like, Oh, by the way, what initially inspired this movie and what it really is about to me is something completely different and i'm not going to tell you guys anything about that so oh snap it like yeah he uh david lynch has this book mm -hmm. about how he uses transcendental meditation to like <laughs> write like kind of free form like just let thoughts like come out of him yeah and and zach Kreger like used that while writing this so it's just like you could tell like a bunch of random things that are just sitting in the back of his subconscious, like just all out. spill out and he somehow makes them all fit together. So barbarian. Super cool. I need to watch really it. Cool. Also the director, I think we talked about this. Did you ever watch whitest kids? You know, no, the comedy troupe. They were really big when I was in high school for some reason. So I, I remember him doing very embarrassing things. And now oh, so he was a part of that movie. comedy troupe. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Dude, what a year for horror. Dude, horror was so stacked this year, man. It's a shame yeah. there's not like an Oscar category for horror. Yeah. Because it would honestly, yeah, it would have racked up, man. Yeah. Okay. My number six movie, speaking of horror, Scream, the new Scream movie. Whoa. I forgot that it came out this year. It was all the way in March. Yeah. I love Scream. I love the whole franchise. The original. This one is. This one was my favorite since the original. Yeah. You saw it. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I just. I, wa I, I watched all the Scream sequels this year. Did you so. watch the original? I had seen the original. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I just watched the sequel. I, I thought. Well, when I was reading your end of the year like recap. Yeah. I kept seeing where you said you watched all the Scream sequels, and I was like, yeah. you didn't say anything about watching Scream. <laughs> and so I thought maybe you just skipped it. I was yeah. like, what a monster. <laughs> uh. The original Scream movie is one of my favorite movies ever. And, and Matthew Lillard's performance in that first one is one of my, like, really uh, inspired me, like, as an actor. But uh, this new one, I think it was exactly what I wanted from a Scream movie. It, uh, Scream itself is a franchise making fun of, it's a, it's a parody series, essentially. Yeah. Which is funny because then the Scary Movie franchise is a parody about those parody I, exactly, movies. Exactly, yeah. But, uh. And so this movie was making fun of all of the the legacy reboots yeah. that has been happening in yeah. horror. And I just think they nailed it, dude. Did it so cleverly, too. Clever. I love the directors. They did Ready or Not. You yeah. ever watch that? I haven't, no. That's a really good one. Um, man, I just, love, I just love Scream. This movie would have been on my list no matter what, even yeah. if it wasn't as great as it was. Yeah. So there, that's my reasoning. <laughs> I just love Scream. Yeah. Nah, I loved it. And we're we're getting another one pretty soon here too. March. Yeah. yeah. I think they're doing like one one a year for this year and then next year. All right. What what did I have? We're at number six? Yeah. I think number so. six. Banshees of Inishired. I haven't finished it, but yeah. I what I've seen I've loved. Man. It's just a so it's directed by Martin McDon. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. Yeah, a, and, a playwright. Yeah, yeah. The thing about all his movies is I haven't really liked any of his other movies. And part of it is because every one of his movies, they on paper are like exactly what I would like. But there's mm -hmm. always something just a little bit off. And so I think part of why I don't like them is it's so frustrating that like, this is it's almost, almost my favorite thing. Yeah. 
What other movies has he done? I don't know. Uh, three Billboards, Seven Psychopaths. I haven't seen it. Yeah. A lot of numbers, though. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, man, this movie finally nails it. It's totally oh, just everything I want. It's, again, it's, it's a comedy at heart. Like, yeah. it, it's there to make you laugh. It's just about, you know, you don't see a lot of, like, platonic male friendship dramas. Yeah. And that's what this is. It is, yeah. Adult too like adult friendship isn't something people explore and it's just too much it's so clever it's dialogue heavy yeah like you could tell he's a playwright exactly yeah colin farrell's performance yeah. mad eye moody's performance yeah yeah it is it is all like centered on colin farrell's performance too and like yeah. i think what's so great about it it's it's one of my favorite of the year and you you could easily imagine how a lesser actor would play that role yeah because he's playing what essentially distills down to a dumb character. There are so yeah. many people that like will try to play dumb for laughs. And like, you could imagine a bad actor, like naked a funny <laughs> face and go over. Yeah. There. Like a Jim Carrey vacation of the part. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's a part where his sister is reading a book and he's like, how do you like the book? And he's like, it's sad. And he's like, well, you shouldn't read that. Then it might make you sad. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. Yeah. Man, that. <laughs> and any other actor would be like, oh, you shouldn't read that. Dur, 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 dur. But like you, you could tell like just in his eyes, he believes everything yeah. he's saying and he means it a hundred percent sincerely. And it yeah. makes it so fun. Uh, only like. So I I love dumb characters. Yeah. There's one other actor I can think of that is just so good at playing a dumb character that it's yeah. just so believable, and that's Ashton Kutcher. Yeah. Like in that '70s show yeah. and and his other sitcoms, dude, that guy. Yeah. Playing dumb, in a good way, uh-huh. is just peak comedy. Yeah, yeah. Dude, also a uh, dude and his donkey are a total vibe in this. And like, <laughs> Barry, whoever, Co- Coey Hand, yeah. or something like that. Oh, oh, he's he's, he's one, also in the Batman. Yeah, he's one of the Batman <laughs> actors who gives a career best performance in another movie. And he was in Eternals. Um, dude, he's a great actor yeah. too. Yeah, dude, I just yeah, yeah. But no, Banshee's of Inish Iron, great movie. I need to finish it because I really, I really want to watch it. My number five movie. We're in the top five now, baby. Prey. Nice. Made it higher than Prey on your list. Yeah. Again, I could have knocked it down. Uh-huh. But I just think like it was like sometimes movies feel like a chore. Yep. And that movie did not. Like it was like it flew by and it was a blast a hundred percent of the way. It, yeah. I hadn't even I've seen none of the other Predator movies. Uh-huh. I love that movie. Like it was just great filmmaking. All of the I think it was like the the perfect example of like when people talk, when directors talk about like, you know, your action scenes and your fight scenes, they should tell a story. And, you know, in the world of professional wrestling, it's kind of the whole point is you're telling a story in a, in a fight. And this was like one of the, the first movies I've seen where I'm just like, during the fight scenes, you're learning so much about everyone. Yeah. And you're, yeah. you're learning because there's not much dialogue and you're learning everything in these uh, action scenes. I just think it was awesome. Yeah. Now that's a really good point about it. It's like all the characterization comes through the, the, the action. Yeah. yeah. So we already talked a bunch about Prey earlier, but yeah. so yeah, that, that's why it ranks so high on my list. Man. Yeah. Number five for me was Smile. I haven't seen movie. it. Dude, I haven't seen it. Dude, it's great. And like, this year was so stacked for horror. People yeah. are gonna, people are gonna like, forget about it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Way. I think people are gonna like look sideways at it a little because like, you know, barbarian x pearl like yeah. are kind of more like critically there but i just i just thought smile it was just like such a thrill ride and like the premise like isn't the most original thing in the world but like you know like weeks after seeing the movie i found myself thinking about it and like i almost think it's like a little deeper than a lot of people like gave it credit for initially just because of how I don't know, just because, like, it isn't postured as, like, an art house horror the way some of the other ones are. But, like, digging into the concept, like, it's it's about, it's not spoiling anything to say mm-hmm. that it's, it, it's, like, about trauma yeah. and, like, generational trauma and how, like, people get locked into cycles of trauma and passing trauma off to someone else. But, yeah. like, I think, it, I think it has, like, more to say about that if and you think about realize. it more. And it's also, like, it's about, like, not just people with trauma, but like being around someone with, with trauma. trauma, loving people with trauma. Yeah. And it also, it's really well directed. Like horror 
has some of the most like visceral directing in it that a lot of people don't realize this has one of the most well executed jump scares that oh, i think really? i've ever seen i will not spoil it so yeah. it's a surprise and if you're like a little bit more of a seasoned horror watcher you maybe you'll see used. it coming but yeah. like man it it does such a great job of like lowering your guard when it needs to be lower than hitting you with something man. crazy like you you really feel like you're in good hands like this director knows it's what just, he's doing yeah. he's got you he's got you on the ride he's taking you through everything he wants you to and yeah love Gosh. smile also the story of it is so crazy because like it barely got made then it was going to be like a streaming exclusive mm-hmm. and then it tested so well that they were like put in theaters. yeah and then they did such a great marketing campaign they did do a great it. marketing yeah. campaign yeah yeah everything about it so cool yeah that's what i was gonna bring up was the mark because i haven't seen the movie but i've seen all the marketing yeah all right oh that was smile next up on the list uh we have my number four bullet train bullet train i knew it wasn't gonna be on your list i knew it wasn't anywhere (laughs) near making it on your list it's number four for me dog that movie now your criticisms of it Uh uh-huh completely valid yeah uh, 100%. It does come across... And I've seen a lot of people hate it on Twitter. Like, Film okay. Twitter hates this movie. Well, f- Film Twitter will hate everything. everything so. yeah. But you nailed it when you said, like, it's a Ryan Reynolds movie without Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. <laughs> and it just made me realize that Brad Pitt should be doing all these Ryan Reynolds movies. I think it was uh-huh. awesome. It, yeah. It's the absurd humor and goofy fun that I just love in movies. Because uh, I think I think we differ a little bit when it comes to, like... Like you, you probably lean a little bit more to like art house, like very serious yeah. things more so than I do. Yeah. And then I probably like a little bit more absurd things uh-huh. than you do. D- this movie, I knew I was going to like this movie in the opening scene uh-huh. when, uh, the, the mayor is having an affair with a prostitute in the window and you just hear her go, I voted for you as she was like <laughs> moaning. And I was like, Oh, this is oh, for me. God. This is, <laughs> This is made for me. I think all the performances are killer. Paperboy from Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, Potentially the next Bond. Is it for real? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the guy from Kick-Ass. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I saw that article yeah. today. I think he would be great for James Bond. But um, I, the whole ca- – Brad. I could watch Brad Pitt do nothing for two hours. Yeah. And so I just – super super great movie. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it a whole bunch. That's all I got cool i don't have anything like fancy to say about it it was uh-huh. just so much fun like <laughs> yeah. i just had a blast yeah 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 i do like when the train like blows up at the end oh yeah like, going down the actually i won't say anything maybe that's a spoiler i, <laughs> I mean i mean we're expecting something to blow up yeah you know yeah. What i mean it's it's not a spoiler movie you know what i mean yeah uh, it's like uh chekhov's train you introduce a train in the first act it's gonna blow yeah. up <laughs> it's just the rules yeah <laughs> Yeah. My number four is Marcel the Shell with shoes on. I did not see this. Okay. Have you have you seen like the viral videos that came out like almost fifteen years ago, it feels like. Of Marcel Somewhere between ten and fifteen years ago was when these videos originally no. came out. I, I don't I can honestly say I don't know anything about that movie other than it's the stop motion shell. Yeah, yeah. Just about a little one inch shell. And it's got a uh, starring Jenny Slate is Jenny the voice Slate. of it. So Jenny Slate and her then boyfriend, maybe even husband, I don't know, mm-hmm. they made these videos together and put them on YouTube. And they've since broken up, but they mm-hmm. like wrote and made this movie together. And they like wow. explore maturity. aspects of the relationship a little in oh, the wow. film. And then it's also... it. It's just about a little tiny person (laughs) and it shows the world through these tiny eyes like yeah so well like it makes outside world feel big and you also just notice tinier details in like little spots in the house they live in and the animation is so great it looks beautiful all the characters feel real even though they're like these barely animated pieces of plastic. Like yeah. they don't have much facial expressions or anything, but it still comes across just great. Yeah. And the moment at there's a moment at the end where like everything, goes, like, it, it's almost like a Pixar movie in which like you go into it expecting it to be cute, yeah. but you, you do not expect it to get like as serious and mm-hmm. emotional as it does. 
I've seen people talk like the memes of like, I, how did this shell make me ball my yeah, eyes out? Yeah. 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 No, it's a beautifully written, beautifully shot. Yeah. Loved it. We get a little Nathan Fielder cameo really? there too. Yeah. Man, I need yeah. to watch it just for that. <laughs> nice. That's another one I haven't, I haven't seen. Okay. My number three. And I haven't heard this one pop up on your list yet, and okay. I'm surprised, but okay. it could still be. Yeah. Black Phone. Okay. Black Phone is like my 11. It oh, just got man. knocked it out just of the got, list. Yeah. Dude, again, this was another one that I was like, yeah. do I take, like, do I drop it lower on my list? Yeah. That movie, there's parts of it where I was like, is this cheesy? And then the next second, I'm like, no, this is awesome. Yeah. That movie. Yeah. I don't even know how to put into words how I feel about it. It's just like, well, what do you think about it? Dude, I, it's kind of like Prey and that it's so simple. That's mm. what makes it work so great. It, 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 you know, growing up as a child, especially like in that time period, the movie takes place mm. in, like the fear of getting kidnapped is it's just like, at the forefront of all your minds. And like, it just, it takes advantage of that, like very primal fear. Fear. And yeah, then you, you like get through it too. The the parts of the movie that are supposed to be suspenseful are insanely suspenseful. Mm-hmm. You feel triumph when the yeah. main character does something. Yeah. You feel so sad when someone, you know, dies or gets kidnapped. Like yeah. it's just like I don't know if there's a lot of like conversation lately about like we don't see movies unless like the movies that come out now are either huge blockbusters yeah. or these they're these tiny low budget things that they throw on streaming services yeah and we don't see these weird like movies that you would in the 70s and 80s yeah and it's just like the perfect example of like this is a perfect movie kind of like yeah the story yeah. beats are perfect you feel the emotions that you're supposed to be feeling and you feel them strongly and then that, that's kind of it. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be anything crazier than that. It's just like, it's just really good. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, totally, totally agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my pretentious Ethan Hawk take. is such yeah. a powerhouse. Dude. And then he shows up and knives out for like two seconds. Yep. Yep. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So that's my number, whatever it was. Okay. My number three. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Nice. Nope. Yep. Yep. Dude, yeah. Man, I mean, I feel I feel like enough ink has been spilt on why Nope is so great, but I like all of Jordan Peele's movies are very much like about something yeah. and like about very current things, but this one you got to you got to dig a little deeper to understand. It. Like it's not like you walk out of the theater and you know exactly what it's about. It's like, "Oh, I get that. Time to move on." It it, it gives you more to yeah. play with and ponder over and just the I don't want to spoil it, but just the, the, you know, the antagonist of it, what it ends up being. It's just such a simple, simple, like, I don't know, like plot twist maybe that like, yeah, we're just so used to everything like this being the same. You just don't expect it, even though it's like, oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's the movie's definitely for people who like move like you, you have to. It, it, like I'm sure like people who are artists appreciate it more mm-hmm. like people who don't like I don't understand poetry yeah and some people don't understand movies yeah and so like Logan Paul did that huge yeah, tr- yeah. and it just like it just yeah. screamed like oh you just don't understand yeah like you just you can't pull a deeper me we have a friend he's like that yeah. he he doesn't get it yeah sometimes like he's yeah. like I, I, I see yeah. what it's trying to do I just yeah. don't get it uh, the funny thing about the logan paul thing though is one of the characters he's talking about is very much like based kind on of based on him yeah and that's <laughs> it's like a lack lack of self-awareness i uh i <laughs> when i saw him tweet that i was like oh man because i i've tried to be like a kind of like an advocate in my life for logan uh-huh. paul because i i'm a big like you know we need to be nice to people even when they make mistakes yeah. but when he did that I, again it was yeah. like hey man i can excuse a lot yeah <laughs> it's all right like at the 11th hour ben shapiro swooped in with the worst film take on twitter and just so. saved him 
Uh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was heartbreaking yeah. to see. Like, I mean, you can't blame people for not understanding the deeper meaning of things sometimes. Yeah. And that movie is very thematical. Like it, yeah. it is about. But also, I think deeper. I think it still works just on a surface level. Alien movie. Oh yeah, for level. Sure. Performances are great. Like I love the brother sister dynamic. Oh yeah, great. Kind of kind of same thing with like the adult male friends. Is like we don't get enough like siblings. siblings. Yeah, yeah. And dude, Kiki Palmer and yeah. Daniel. I cannot. I, I always mess up his last yeah. name, but. Fantastic actors, yeah. just also, fantastic. Also, Stephen Yen has like, or Stephen Young oh, as yeah. one of the most like standout performances to me. Like when he's, when he's talking about, when he's remembering like the, the thing monologue. with Gordy, and he's yeah. talking about the SNL sketch, dude, and like how he's tried to like seem chill about it, but you could just see subtly in his eyes, and it's so traumatic for him. That's dude. what one of the like highlights of movies. For I would have watched here. the movie about Gordy. Yeah. Like that's yeah. how it like I think that movie's so cool cuz like you could chop it up into sections and each section is so interesting. Yeah. Like there's no part of that movie that you're like, "Okay, well, let's get back to the other stuff." Yeah. It's just all super interesting. Yeah, dude. I love to know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Which brings us to number 2. Nope. <laughs> nope. Hey. <that's laughs> uh, everything we just said. I just yeah. dude um a- even acting wise uh, it's just oh man just everything that movie yeah. is just so great so yeah my number two is nope okay it's, it's dope nice. nope is dope nope is dope <laughs> i love when like whenever it came out all the articles were like nope more like yep <laughs> <laughs> i saw a great tweet which is like nope more like yep says a, a copywriter that's getting paid like <laughs> eighty thousand dollars a year <laughs> yeah i said pennies Oops, I misread the the joke. (laughs) Okay, my number two. uh, This is very much like an Arn Housley type movie, but uh, it's a Norwegian movie. It technically (laughs) came out last year, but like it didn't really reach the States until this year. I'll allow it. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I liked it so much that like, you know, I had to put it on this list because it wouldn't be on any other ones. But it's the worst person in the world. Mm -hmm. I think it's still streaming on Hulu you want to check it out but it's a uh, it it is about like four years in this woman's life she's either like late 20s early 30s something like that and just about her like trying to figure out like what she really wants out of life mm. and it's like you see her go through a lot of different career changes and a lot of different relationships and i don't i don't know how to say too much without giving a lot of away but mm. I don't know. It's just, it's just one of the most like human feeling movies. Like it captures like I'm I turned 28 like two months ago. So like yeah. I'm very much like in that era of time where you're like, oh, I'm going to die soon. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I got to start filing for retirement. I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, it just shows like both like kind of the carefreeness of being able to try a lot of things when you're sort of young, but also how life's kind of coming at you quick very quick at the same time and like really big life-changing things happen too and Mm. it's also it's it's kind of a rom-com too not really but it is like a lot of it is about romance and those sequences are great there are a few like really visually striking moments like there's one i think they show it in the trailer but like there's a moment where she's like in love or something. And you know, sometimes when you're in love, it feels like time freezes and like this whole city, like everything just freezes and she's running through like this city that's frozen in time. And, and it's just, yeah. it's dope. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Worst so person in the world. Yeah. It just means a lot to you personally. Yeah. And it ranks number two. Yeah. I wish I had more to say, but I haven't seen it. Uh, yeah. But I read what you wrote about it. And oh, so yeah. I like it. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Robert likes it. I like it. Okay, my number one movie of the year, which if you are playing the like, well, what hasn't he mentioned yet? You probably Uh, know it. You guys probably know it. My number one movie for the year is Glass Onion. Glass Onion. Dude, if you've listened to Written By or you know me, you know the whodunit genre is just like my favorite thing in the whole wide world. Uh, Ryan Johnson is always talking in interviews talking about how much he loves Agatha Christie novels. I talk all the time about how much I love Agatha Mm -hmm. Christie novels. Uh, It's just like, 
Ryan Johnson is making the movies that I've wanted to make my entire life, and he beat me to it. <laughs> but I can't be mad because yeah. it's like I I couldn't make Knives Out because I'm not there yet. Yeah. Uh, but man, those movies, the performances in that movie, the Glass Onion, even Dave Batista yeah. pulling out all this stuff. Madeline Klein. Have you been seeing that line reading on Twitter going viral? She's like, oh, I am a Taurus. Yes. Dude. Yes, oh, yeah. man. Dude, I mean, we saw that movie together. We did, yeah. I mean, we were together, but we were like separate rows <laughs> because it was packed. Yeah. Um, dude, that movie. I, I saw it twice. And the second time I watched, I got to pick up on all the details yeah. that I missed the first time around. Yeah. I have watched it the second time. So you have? It on Netflix. Isn't yeah. it crazy? Yeah. Like, you know, I'm not going to spoil anything. I, I love, I could talk about this movie for I need, need to chill. Ryan Johnson takes the whodunit genre and he's done it in both of his movies where he has turned the plot twist on its head in a way that no one expected. Yeah. I don't want to give anything away, so I'm trying to be yeah. generic. But I mean, it, it leans into a lot of plot twist tropes and then it exactly. twists on top of those tropes. Right, which is so unique, yeah. but it's like it's just like the movie where it's yeah. like... I don't want to spoil it, but yeah. so, and then, uh, I love the way that like he's put kind of his twist on the whodunit genre where we'll watch a movie and then halfway through we rewatch the movie yeah. from a different perspective. Yeah. And that really doesn't happen in a lot of whodunits. Yeah. And so that's really neat. Like in the first one, I'll talk about the first one mm -hmm. because it's been out for a while. In the first one, um, usually in a, in a murder mystery, there's the false, uh, finish where it's like, oh, we solved it, but it's not really solved yet. Uh -huh. And instead of just doing that, he in the first one, you he actually solves it. We see what happens. We know what happens. And you're like, whoa, the movie's over. And then you find out, oh, wait, there's another plot. To it. Like, it's just, mm -hmm. I could go on forever. That's why it's my number one movie. I love Knives Out and Ryan Johnson. Dude, yeah. Love it. Love it too. Yeah. <laughs> My number one movie. And if anyone knows me, it shouldn't be surprising, but it's everything everywhere all at once. Yeah, no, I knew that was going to be yep, your number one. Yep. I knew it. I, yeah. I think it's a lot of people's number one. Yeah. Yeah. It'll probably win. Is it nominated? They haven't announced yet, but. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> Man, <laughs> it, uh, it really does like feel like one of those like kind of once in a lifetime movies. Like there, there are only a few occasions where I could like remember walking out of a theater like with my jaw dropped like that much yeah but it, it's it's so visually stunning and it's it, it attempts the impossible it tries to make a movie about life about absolutely everything and everywhere all at once <laughs> yeah exactly yeah and it it does such a good job it's also like inspiring just as a filmmaker because it does a good job of making it feel like it's about everything and it's showing everything, but really like when you look at how it's shot, it's very contained and they're reusing yeah. a lot of the same things. And in the midst of like this giant world, it's very much like this little family drama too. Yeah. It, killer performances. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, like my, my favorite performance, it's, it's tied between like Colin Farrell and the guy in this one. I forget what his yeah, name is. From but, Indiana Jones. Yeah. 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 But like that line where he's like playing the dramatic like Korean movie version of him and he's yeah. like in another life I would have loved <laughs> just doing laundry yeah. and taxes with you. It's like it's so like heartbreaking and dude, I don't <laughs> like it feels so expansive. There's so many setups and payoffs that you oh, yeah. don't expect. Yeah. The one with the raccoon is raccoon so funny to me. The Daniels have such a unique style. I, I love how they play with sound. It's like yeah. the sound design is really good. And every once in a while, there'll be like a really cartoony sound like in the middle Boing. of a moment. Yeah. yeah. They, they have yeah. A stop motion rocks and it's like an emotional scene. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Like going back to the originality thing, like there are so many things in this movie that could only happen in this movie. movie. Nowhere yeah. else. The action scenes and the fighting, super dope. Dude, the fighting. Super dope. Yeah. Yeah, this movie didn't make my top 10. Uh -huh. And I think it's because I didn't see it in theaters. Yeah. I think that's yeah. what, because I watched it at home on the TV. Uh -huh. And afterwards, I was like, oh, that was really awesome. Yeah. But I didn't quite get why everyone, because yeah. I mean, everyone was talking about how this was the greatest movie ever. Uh -huh. 
And I guess I was just like, it was, it was really good. I really, yeah. really liked it. I think if I would have seen it in theaters, it would probably have been my number one. Maybe. Because I can see where, like, those crazy sequences. Yeah. Hopefully hopefully they'll put it back in around Oscar season. And we'll, we'll do go, that We'll go see. Yeah, yeah. Heck yeah, man. But yeah. I mean, what really works about it, it's just such a big original movie. And at the heart of it, it's just yeah. a little family drama. And I love the daughter. Daniels. Yeah. 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 What a great movie. Yeah. Top 10 movies. That was our top 10 movies of 2022. Yeah. 2023 is upon us. We're already seeing movies left and right. I can't wait till next year <laughs> when we will give you our top 10 of 2023. So stick around and I hope you enjoyed it all. Hey guys, on our Instagram, <laughs> leave a comment with your favorite movies of this year. I'm Casey Kasem. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Man. Yeah, follow us on Instagram, guys. We're doing a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Cop Rock. Ours. Yeah, be watching the Cop Rock series. Subscribe yeah. to this YouTube channel. We're doing video yeah, next season. We got so many cool things planned for next season. We, we have. Wait. Yeah, we have. We're, a lot we're of cool about stuff. to start recording season three. Yeah, we have we're just a few there, more things but... we got to figure out. We've got a lot happening. We're in pre production for our next short. Uh, Robert has some directing stuff going on. I have acting stuff going on. So we're very busy. But yeah. once season three comes out, you guys are going to be. Ooh. Dude. Hopefully as hype as we are. Dude, a little more housekeeping for the people that have stuck around. Yeah. First of all, my medium article, I'll put I'll put that down there. Yeah, if do you that. Want to read my thoughts on movies, but also, Trouble Date, it's still coming out. <laughs> <laughs> it's still coming out, I promise. Oh. And we are. I I just watched the short for the first time in a while yesterday. I'm still in love with it. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a while. We've made progress on the score, and we are looking for a release the week of valentine's day yeah don't hold us to it but yeah that's what yeah. we're looking for but we were like you know we're almost there we could put it out this month possibly but we're so close to valentine's to the day. day the most popular date day in the whole year yeah. why not put the film out that day so yeah i think yeah. that would be cool um hopefully it comes out yeah that's that's <laughs> what we're aiming for we'll, we'll give any updates if anything changes we spent a long time working on that, and uh, I'm excited for it to finally be out. Because yeah. in my head, it's been out for a year. <laughs> Same, yeah. We were talking about this. It almost we we have a hard time grasping that there's still more to do on it. Because it's like right. we finished our end of it. We even screened it to some people. Got At a reactions. Film festival, yeah. yeah, it felt amazing. Yeah. And then it Dude, sat on a computer. Almost, almost across its finish line. But once it comes out. Um, we're gonna put a lot of effort into promoting it, so be on the lookout. Yep. I don't know why I said that's so sad. <laughs> I think I'm just tired. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think that's everything. Hey, thank you for listening. Uh, this popped up on your podcast feed kind of unannounced because we've been on hiatus. I hope you guys don't get like, oh, they're back for season three, and then they're like, oh. We will try to drop stuff every month. The Cop Rock stuff is going on the YouTube channel. Yeah. And we always are posting stuff on Instagram. Yeah. Oh, that that podcast episode we couldn't put out the week we talked about movies. We're going to put that out. Yeah. During the hiatus. It's uh I don't know if you if you are I believe most of our listeners probably know about it by now. Uh we were a part of the Bible Man remake trailer. Yeah, yeah. And we did an interview with the director Zach and he wrote wrote a short film. We did a bowl yeah, episode. With we did us, a bowl so. episode with yeah. him. So, yeah. So that'll be coming out next month. Yeah, next month. So, <laughs> so cool. Give us money. See y'all. Give us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do it for the art. I do it for the money. <laughs>